Nahum. Now, when we looked at Jonah, Jonah was a prophet called into Nineveh to proclaim God's judgment against Nineveh. And they repented and got right. By the time we get to Nahum, well, Nineveh has resumed their wicked actions. They've sinned against the Lord. And Nahum is against Nineveh. Now, Nineveh is a, it was the capital of Assyria, about 220 miles from the capital today of Baghdad, of Iraq. Jonah preached in Nineveh approximately 750 B.C. Samaria fell to the Assyrians 722 B.C. Nahum prophesies against Assyria approximately 663 B.C. Jeremiah warns the Babylonian invasion about 626 B.C. Approximately 625 B.C. Zephaniah prophesied the fall of Nineveh. And Nebo Elisher of Babylon destroys Nineveh in 612 B.C. So what God says has come to be And approximately 60 years, 160 years, after Jonah, Jonah gets his wish. And they're destroyed for their sins. They repented, but they got in the error of iniquities and sin. America has been warned. America has had her great revivals. People got saved. Bars closed. Movie theaters shut down. America's back to her sins. The churches are praising Roe versus Wade. Yet Congress has passed, you cannot offend, you cannot discriminate against two sodomites from being married. Roe versus Wade was a little battle. America's losing the war on sin. Things, things look right. Things look good. But everybody's getting mad at the Christian. Everybody's getting mad at God. Everybody's getting mad at the Bible. Everybody's getting mad at the Christian. At all what has been happening in the last few months. And let me guess right now. There are people in the think tank right now. we got to shut that Bible up. we got to shut those Christians up. Well, that will never happen. You didn't study Jeremiah. You didn't study Nahum. You didn't study the minor prophet. You didn't study Hosea. Judah had kings that there were revivals. Those revivals intacted of getting rid of gods. The, the, the Baptist Catholic Church, I mean the Baptist Church that has the Catholic Events. The paganism of Easter and Christmas and you can't kick their gods. They're not going to get rid of that. They're not going to get rid of face painting of VBS. And we open up Nineveh chapter 1, the burden. I mean Nahum chapter 1. The burden of Nineveh. The book of the vision of Nahum, the Ecclesiastes. Now that's where he's from. Now it's funny because Nahum 
means comfort. Jonah meant dove. There's a coming a comfort to Judah. The enemy of Israel, the Assyrians, are going to be put down. Problem is, the Babylonians are going to come in. Because neither Israel or Judah got right. Now watch. God is jealous. You know what God wrote? You know what made God jealous? The worship of gods by his people. God told Israel, if you have other gods, you have idolatry, you have imagery, and you worship them, I'm a jealous God. And I'm here to tell you, you, you Christians, you worship gods and goddesses in the form of Ishtar. I don't care if you like it, I don't care what you feel, I don't care how much you close your eyes, when sin is sin, and you worship Tammuz. The God of December 25th. I know a pastor, he doesn't wear a tie. He'll get up there with an orange tie for his sports team. That's idolatry. You'll worship the colors of your team. But he can't carry a Bible to the pulpit. I know people, their pastor, we got the greatest pastor. We got the greatest church. And I, I, I've been in them and I heard them. Excuse me, have you read what Laodicea, have you read what God says about you and me in the Laodicean church age? How can you think you got the greatest? When we make God vomit, we make God puke, and we lie about ourselves. We have all these gods. We have this witchcraft in the church. We got an American Idol. We got actresses and actresses. We got Republicans. We got Democrats. We got all kinds of idols and idolatry and gods in the Christian saved circle of the church. That makes God jealous. You know what I believe? I've been saved since 1987, April. You figure out how many years? Over 30 years. You know what I you know why I think the rapture is gonna happen to the church? Not because we're great, because it, it would happen during Paul's time. It was the great how wonderful the great church is, it should happen during Peter, James, John, and Paul. I know why the rapture is gonna happen. Because the church is getting wicked, the church is getting horrible. Just, go get them. Get I'm telling you. Paul said we've been lovers ourselves. And there's a whole long list. That's your Baptist church. The world is supposed to act like that. That's nothing new for the world. So God is jealous. The Lord revenges. The Lord revenges. Ooh, twice. That's important. And it's furious. The Lord will take vengeance on his adversaries. He reserveth wrath for his enemies. Now this is also a double application of what the second advent is going to be. Right now, Jeremiah is coming up to the plate. Judah, you've sinned. Judah, you got the queen of heaven. Judy, you got altars on every street corner of Jerusalem. Truly, you open up the newspaper, the horoscope, every day you worship the, the, the stars. That's what the church is. The church is filled. All are welcome. No, they're not. That's not scriptural. Because there's only one way to get into the church. And it's by believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. Thou shalt be saved. The Holy Spirit comes and dwells in you. You're saved. You're in the church. I left the church. Me and my wife Lisa. We were in this church. 
Nothing really happened. We went to church. We went to church. And a couple of months went by. And this family, beloved of the pastor, click, come in. And they were there for a couple of weeks. And the pastor came up and said, who, 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 was, who was for this family to be as far as our church? Everybody's hand went up. My hand, I don't know. I was kind of newly saved. Haven't been brought up. In the Lord, the man that, that witnessed to me, he left me for the wayside, as most pastors do. And I went, raised my hand, I don't know. The pastor looked at me, pointed me out for a minute. You're not a member of this church. Wait a minute. This, I, I'm saved. I'm in the body of Christ. This, this was a few messages you had to go. So we left. He said we weren't part of the church, so we left. Didn't explain nothing. We got an angry God right now at Nineveh and their sins. They were right. Listen, the king stepped out off his throne. Nineveh, I mean, I, I'm going to get these names messed up. Jonah said, he took off his robe, he put on sackcloth, he didn't eat, he didn't drink, including the animals. God looked down and looked at them, those dirty, filthy dogs. Sorry about the, the Gentiles, the, the Assyrians. All right, well, I like that. I'm not going to do the destruction now. I'll let them live. Things have changed. And you won't believe what's in the church house. Vengeance on his adversary reserveth wrath for his enemies. The Lord is slow to anger. You know how long God has put up with man all the way back to Adam and Eve? Great in power. All the great things that God has done is recorded in the Bible. And the Apostle John said there were things that Jesus did that did not get into the Gospels. A God that said, Son, be the light. Okay, boom, here I am. You know what? Moon, you be the night light. Oh, okay, boom. And he made the stars awesome. He made the star. P.S. He made the stars awful. Have you seen the images of Hubble? And they got this new telescope. That's that's you know what that is? He made the stars awesome. Man can't count them, but God knows their name, and God made them. That's power. All the events that happened upon the Egypt. How about all the events that happened to the Egyptians in Exodus? And the ones that didn't happen to his people Israel. And God divided them. How on earth? The Red Sea. All these years has been a Red Sea. All the years the River Jordan has been flowing and overflowing. And Israel walked. And Elijah and Elijah walked on dry ground. How about the power of Jesus Christ over death and hell on Calvary and won the battle of Satan? Will not at all acquit the wicked. Now, I've taught you the wicked. The wicked. Shows up many times in the Bible. That, that, that's the wicked person. I also pointed to you that can also be the wicked one. The Antichrist. There's no way for the Antichrist ever to get saved. He's going to be cast in the lake of fire before man even goes in the lake of fire. The Lord has his way in the whirlwind and in the storm, and the clouds are the dust of his feet. Again, this is a double application of the wrath of God and the, the second advent. And the tribulation period. In the midst of the book of Job, Jehovah speaks to Job 42 months, 42 chapters. A man who's been plagued on the ground by Satan. 
by weather, by death, by enemy attack. And in the midst of the book, God speaks to Job out of a whirlwind. And in the end of the book of Job, his children are resurrected. He rebukes the sea and makes it dry. He dries up the rivers. Basha languishes and Carmel. The flower of Lebanon language. The mountains quake at him. Yeah, that's the second advent. The hills melt. You realize when Jesus Christ comes back, the entire form of the earth, all the earth is going to be changed. That Jerusalem is going to be the highest point in the world. The Mount of Olives is going to split. It's going to be a valley. The earth is burned at his presence. Yea, the world. After, I mean, in the world and all that they're in. That goes into after the millennium. When the heavens and earth melt with the fervent heat. Revelation 20. That's when, that's when God and Jesus Christ will put on their ultimate holiness. The earth is out of here. The heavens are out of here. They burn with the fervent heat. It's been polluted by man. It's been polluted by Lucifer. It's been polluted by Satan and the devil and the angels. It's unclean. Who can stand before his indignation? Who can abide in the fierceness of his anger? If you're on the wrong side of God, no one. If you're a child of God, of the nation of Israel, well, that's... That will come to an end and God will give you that new heart. And God will wash you clean. The fury is poured out like fire. Our God's a consuming fire. And the rocks are thrown down by him. And they come up with these superheroes and great powers. Superman is going to bow down before Jesus Christ. Thou art the Lord. Wonder Woman is going to bow down before Jesus. Thou art the Lord. The Iron Man. And all of them. Because all they are is Satan in another form. Pleasing to man. Is there a Superman? Yeah. He's coming with great power. He's going to have a seven year reign. The Lord is good. A stronghold in a day of trouble. And he knows them that trust in him. Now that is opposition to what we just read. You see, there are two sides to God those that are right. And those that are wrong. Not everybody goes to heaven. Not everybody God loves. Well, my preacher, I don't care what your preacher says. If he's preaching that kind of crap, he's trying to hide something from you. Or he wants the pleasures of the world. But with an overrunning flood, will he make an utter end of the place thereof? Darkness shall pursue his enemies. That's the end of the tribulation period. No sun, no moon. What do you imagine against the Lord? And there's all kinds of... 
you imagine what event Satan is thinking of this day against God? I mean, he had, I don't want to say the nerve, but he had, that he walked up to Jesus Christ and said, listen, if you fall down and worship me, I'll give you all the, I'll give you all the kingdoms of the world. Now, did he believe that? Why would he have not said it? I don't think Satan wastes time. I don't think Satan would waste his breath if he didn't think. I think at that point in time, hey, you know what? You know how I can really get God really sore at me and I can get the, the, the throne of God if his son bows down and worships me. And if I get his son to worship me and I give him, you know, that, that plenty of the temporal kingdoms of the world, that means the other angels are going to have to fall down and worship me too. Because Jesus has his angels. I mean, he's already got what portion of the world to believe that another Jesus. He will make an utter end. Affliction shall not rise up the second time. There's no affliction in the eternal life. There's no rise of Satan in the eternal life. There's no more wars in the eternal life. I'm talking about all those that are right with God going to New Jerusalem, New Heavens, New Earth, and all those with Satan go into the lake of fire. Don't worry, there'll be there will never be another uprising. And if there was, we are settled in, we are we are sealed by a seal that will never be broken. For while they be folded together as thorns, a weed, a waste, once the rose dies, everything else is thrown in the garbage. You don't keep the thorns. If by chance you take that rose and you're going to press it in a book, you cut the thorns off. While they are drunken as drunkards, they shall be devoured as stubble, fully dry, burn up. Everything that involves this world and everything that involves Satan in this world, saved or lost, has no eternal value. And even for the Christian. Part of the Christian judgment is there's wood, hay, and stubble. That pastor I mentioned that wear that orange tie for his, for his team. All that with his team is going to burn up. It's nothing. You didn't wear that tie for Jesus. You wore that tie. <laughs> That's a wood, hair stubble. And how to congregate. Ha <laughs> ha, it's a ha <laughs> ha, yeah, oh, yeah. You know, I read in my Bible, you don't want to hear the day when God laughs. There is one coming out of me that imagines evil against the Lord. The wicked counselor, there is the Antichrist. There is that false prophet. If you didn't think I would, knew what I was talking about. He's going to try to attempt again with much success to drive the world away from God, to drive the world against Jesus, to drive the world against the Jew. How well does he do it? When Jesus Christ comes back, it says in Revelation 19, he's got a name that no man knoweth.
Thus saith the Lord. Though they be quiet, and likewise many, You know what the problem with Adolf Hitler was? He wouldn't shut up. You know what the problem with, with a lot of your, your rulers of nations during the wars and all that? They wouldn't shut up. Look at Nebuchadnezzar. Oh, great kingdom my God made by you didn't shut up, brother. And you were told to shut up. Now I'm going to say shut up. Some people don't like shut up. There are people who go to a church and they, they know there's problems in that church and they don't say nothing. The Bible says you're to preach in season, out of season, rebuke, resort with all long suffering. Paul was there one day. Oh, to the mighty unknown God. Oh, to the unknown mighty God. <laughs> Excuse me, people. Let me show you who the real God is. Paul didn't keep his mouth shut. I had a Sunday school teacher. Well, you know, we don't say anything about the Catholics, even though he had the, the, uh, the daily bread given to Baptists. We don't say that kind of stuff. We're, we don't touch other religions. You'll be cut down. We're here exposed. And there's a deception. We're here to tell the brethren, hey, it's a deception. Do right. When he shall pass through. Though I have afflicted thee, as God, I will afflict thee no more. That's talking to God. That's God talking to the Jews. Don't worry. There will not be another time like Jacob's trouble. You know what I mean? In the court of America, you know, it, it, it's called double jeopardy. See, once Israel gets that new heart, and they get God's spirit when Jesus returns, they're not going to sin again. Thus saith the Lord, though they be quiet. For now will I break his yoke from off thee. Uh-huh. What? Jesus said, Any of your burden? Cast your cares upon me. Take of my yoke. Jeremiah was told to put a wooden yoke on. This is a representation of what the, the, the servants do. The, the, the burdens you people in Judah are going to carry. And, and then there was that man, that, you know, he broke them. Oh, you know. God said, Jeremiah, you better make a pair of iron ones. Because I'm going to put a yoke of iron upon Judah through Babylon. Nahum says the only way that yoke is going to be broken is by God. You know, the Jews had a right, but they were wrong. They said to Jesus, we be not in bondage. What? Who would you have to get permission to, to have Jesus crucified? Who? You have to go to who? I would... Who destroyed you in 70 AD? Who? Who? Who were you in bondage during Exodus? Who? Who were you in bondage when Israel went to Syria? Who took Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and tried to change them to no longer be G huh? What was that? Who? 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 Who gave you the divine order, decree to go back and build? Jerusalem, who, what, uh, uh, you, you've not been on, what? Ever since the day that you said, God? Yes. We want a king like all the nations. You, you put that yoke on. 
You know, you know what that yoke in King Saul's reign was? They feared everything. Goliath comes out and they run in the hole. A little shepherd boy. There's a battle that Saul ran this. They were hungry. So, you know, I hold my adversary that touch no food, eat no food. You mean, you mean to tell me an entire army of Israel under King Saul couldn't find one man named David? But Jonathan came out, I think it's twice, and met with David personally. I will burst thy bonds asunder. That's through Jesus Christ. They got one more yoke pole they're going to tie themselves to. Rome and the Antichrist. The only way they're going to be burst of those bonds is when Jesus Christ comes back. And the Lord has given a commandment concerning thee that no more of thy name be sown out of the house of thy gods. There we go. That's what God made jealous. That's what, that, that's what it is. But he's been talking to the Ninevites, the Assyrians. He said, well, Sally, how, how come you reference that to the Jews? Because that's what Jeremiah told us they were doing. I said there was a double application. I've been applying the application to the Jews. This is Nineveh. What's one sin of all the sins that, that Assyria did? You cursed the Jews. Now it's time to be cursed yourselves. And I don't care if, if, if Nahum would go into Nineveh and this city shall be destroyed in 40 days. Get the sack off. Get, no, no, no. Now ain't going to work no more. I said, whoever curses the Jew, they're going to be cursed. That cur sign, seal, and deliver, brother. I don't know what America's going to do for gas, fuel, the Arabians. But if America ever gets to the point where, and she has teetered to the, the, the top, cursed than Jews. Show me a nation that cursed them Jews that God blessed. Just name one. I'll be happy. That eventually, within time, before the great white throne judgment, a nation that cursed that Jew survived. And went off into the eternal life. Happy good luck. Name one. Only way I read the Bible, the Gentiles get into the millennium out of the tribulation, is they bless the Jews and they didn't even know they were doing it. Out of the house of thy God. You see, there were buildings in Nineveh dedicated to the gods. Temples. Ephesians had the temple to great Diana. When you read a city in the Bible, it says Baal and whatever. That, that's Lord. It's the Lord of the good gods. There was a city named Asterisk. There's a god named Asterisk. That city was given to Asterisk. Ur, where Abram came out, the, the land of Ur, is given to the moon god. 
The very same God today that's worshipped by the Muslims. We have a state of the 50 states in our country called, now you mispronounce it, quinky dinky with the, with the devil in the Catholic Church. It's called Maryland. I don't know how you get Maryland out of M-A-R-Y-L-A-N-D. That's Maryland. That's like Christ Mass. You see, you got the Baptist pool, but you don't have a Bible believer pool. At the Baptist, Merry Christmas. Oh, we're going to put Christ back in Merry Christ Mass. Christ was never in it. You don't even know what happens at them. I, I guess you, know, you better pray for every church you pay. You don't even know what the churches do. I know what the Catholics do. I know what the Polish part of the Catholics do. My family were Polish Roman Catholics. You need to sit down and shut up. You're not a pastor of a church. Well, you pray for every church. You don't know what's going on. You don't know church history, my friend. You're going to pray for a body of, of, of people that killed a body of believers that our church comes from. Really? I will cut off the graven image and the molten image. The Philistines, we knew they had Dagon. The fish had the God. And, and when they brought the ark in there, they, you know, they fell down. They put him back up. Next day he fell down and his arms were cut off and all that. Those gods don't stand before God. They're going to fall down. Imagine that second time. I mean, there they are in the middle of the night. There's Dagon. There's God. I didn't, I didn't fall down, brother. Uh, Jesus is Lord. Well, not yet. But let me take those arms off you so he can't help you. I didn't do it. They did it too. And the next day they wake up and Dagon's on the ground. His arm's been chopped off. And they serve the fallen God. There was, a, there was a king in Israel or Judah, I forget which one. They go in the battlefield, and, and the, the enemy loses. They leave all their gods, and either Israel or Judah, they went up there and picked up the fallen gods. And, These are now our gods. <laughs> That's the same thing with your Estar. And your Tamus, they're fallen gods, and you worship them. I will make thy grave. Wages of sin is death, for thou art most vile. And remember, this is Nineveh. I know I put the devil application to, to Israel, but the, the, the scriptural application and the context is verse 1. Nineveh. Now, are you ready? I don't read the Old Testament. I only read the New Testament. I'll show you something. Behold upon the mountains of the feet of him that brings good tidings and publish peace. O Judah. Alright, that's Judah. Keep thy solemn feast, law. Perform thy vows, law. For for the wicked shall no more pass through thee. Millennium. He is utterly cut off. So in verse 15. Oh, I got rid of the invites. I got rid of your enemies. Double application. Second advent. When Jesus Christ takes care of all the enemies of Israel. Application of Nineveh. He takes care of the Ninevites. Assyria is not going to come in Judah. But don't get so happy. Because Jeremiah says Babylon's coming. Okay. You see, Judah got like America. Nothing's going to happen to us. And like, oh no. Got to get rid of that pride. All right. Read, let's read Nahum 115, the Old Testament. Okay, ready? Behold upon the mountain of the feet of him that bringeth good tidings 
and published peace. O Judah, keep thy solemn feast, perform thy vows, the wicked shall no more pass through thee. He is utterly cut off. Romans. Romans chapter 10. I don't read the Old Testament. Romans chapter 10. Verse 15. Actually, you know what? Let's let's go to Romans chapter 10, verse 9. Let's start at verse 9. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. That's the gospel. You believe in the gospel. It doesn't say anything about inviting them to church. For the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession made of salvation. That's salvation through belief. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him, whosoever believes in him, Whosoever believes in shall not perish, but have everlasting life. What must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Got it? For the scripture saith, Whosoever believes on him shall not be ashamed. So what do you do with a Christian? Say, oh, I'm, I'm saved, but I, I, I can't tell anybody. Either the scripture's wrong or you're wrong. For there's no difference between the who, the Jew and the Greek. I guarantee that made the Jews very, very lovable with the Apostle Paul. Remember, you remember Jonah's attitude with the, with the I know the Greek, but he was the Nineveh, the Gentiles. I want you to go, I want you to go to Nineveh and preach to those people. Pew! Wrong way, Jonah. Peter, I want you to go to the jet. I don't know, Lord. I've touched nothing unclean. All right. Now there's no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Okay. How then shall they call upon him in whom they have not believed? How shall they believe in him in whom they have not heard? And how shall they fear without a... Now that's where the church is, they bring them to church. No, Jesus said, go in all the world and preach the gospel. You're the preacher. Your message is the gospel. Okay, here we go. And how shall they preach except they be sent? Go in all the world. <laughs> I don't know what the will of God is for me in my life. Go to the world. As it is written. Okay, ready? How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace. And bring glad tidings of good things. Where do we hear that from? That was Nahum. Nahum's Old Testament. I don't read the Old Testament. Where do you think Paul got most of his writings? I don't think Paul right now in Rome is going to say, all right, I'm going to quote from Galatians, but you guys got to wait till I write it first. Now, hold on. L let me tell you about the ministry, but wait till I write to Timothy and Titus. I haven't written it yet. It's on my mind. No. And notice how them that preach the gospel of peace. Now, go back to Nahum, chapter 1, verse 15. A behold upon the mountains of feet and him that bringeth good tidings. What is gospel? It's good tidings. What's that? Good news. So when you go to church or you go to work and, and you, you talk about what was on the news and you don't tell about the good news, oh, you are in danger with Jesus. So we're not here to the, the news of the television, the news of the radio. We're not here for Fox. We're supposed to be here with the gospel. 
the good news. Didn't say anything about church. The gospel is the death and burial and resurrection of Jesus. Plain and simple. 